spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me for i took a breath you breathe your life in me so so kind to me good morning church i'm pastor mike wallman of the grace presbyterian church of vista california and i'm so glad to be back from a little uh, vacation and time of rest after the um, the christmas holiday and i'm grateful to um, pastor scott delu and phil sparkman for covering and leading us in worship and preaching and teaching and uh, what a great ministry uh, they were able to give to us over the last couple of weeks. Um, our live worship, of course, is temporarily suspended until we get the go-ahead from uh, the California state government and the county of San Diego to have our public worship again, but stay tuned. Um, we never know when that might take place, uh, hopefully within the next month or so. Um, in the meantime, you can always find us here, um, and uh, we'll lead you in worship, and we'll have some fellowship. Today, we're going to be ordaining and installing new church officers. So right after my sermon, we'll have an opportunity to see some of the members of our congregation and uh, who have uh, received and accepted the call to ministry here at Grace Press, and uh, what a joy that will be. Um, we are grateful for your tithes and offerings that you have been giving. Um, we uh, appreciate the fact that it looks like we'll be um, uh, finishing 2020 in the black uh, due to some um, gifts from God uh, to sustain us. And so thank you for your uh, donations. If you'd like to give, uh, you can go online to our our um, our website and you can push that donate button and um, give as generously as you think god is calling you to give and or uh, you can mail your your gifts into the church office if you have any prayer needs or pastoral needs be sure and call us or email us and let us know what those are and we'll um, respond to you just as soon as we get those messages uh, we don't want anyone to feel alone or isolated to the point where they don't have contact with their church and we would love to to pray for you and to minister to your particular needs well uh, we're going to begin our worship in just a moment with a, a song from the praise band called reckless love because we're talking about the reckless love of god that goes knows no limits it goes beyond what we whatever hope or think and rescues us and loves us and cares for us sacrifices for us and um, welcomes us into his family um, as fellow uh, servants of god so without further ado let us begin
Our call to worship this morning comes from 1 Chronicles 29, verses 10 through 17. David's Prayer. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Well, thank you, Glenna, um, for that call to worship. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would lead and guide us and inspire us during this time of worship to respond to your word, your promises of hope and faith and love and eternity with you. Thank you, Lord, for this moment, for the church to gather and to uh, lift praises to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now for uh, a hymn called Here I Am, Lord. Our theme for the day is, is about servanthood and serving Christ. Uh, and this wonderful hymn sung by our ladies trio and the words are provided for you to sing along with us. Uh, so let us sing, here I am, and then I'll be back uh, with my message for the moment.
Wow, isn't that a great hymn? I just love our music department and the inspirational music and songs that they're able to provide for us and to enhance our worship service. Well, we made it. Uh, 2020 is, is done. It's behind us. And all the fears and anxieties associated with that year um, have been put to rest, hopefully, and we get to start a, a brand new year uh, filled with hope and uh, deliverance, of course, uh, for the COVID pandemic as the uh, vaccines are being made available. And uh, we just can't wait to get out and back together again and worship. Um, we're also free of the chaos of the national elections, and I'm so glad that's done. Hopefully the unacceptable and very tragic events in Washington, D.C. this last week will not continue. So let's keep our, our government in our prayers um, and ask for God's peace and, and calm to be over um, our government officials and safety for them. And I find hope in the fact that just a few hours after the riots at our nation's capital, um, the, our elected leaders resumed work once again. They completed what they were setting out to accomplish on that particular day to show the world that our um, republic democracy will uh, be sustained and will never fail. So hang in there, our national problems will be overcome. But until such time, we have amazing opportunities to share the love and the salvation of Christ um, to our families and our friends uh, who are searching for answers and healing during this time of pain. You see, we can give up. We can hide in our homes or lose hope. But, but I think it is better to look for the opportunity to bring good news of the salvation of Jesus Christ, to build hope and restoration in a dark and frightened world. Hundreds of people all around us are in desperate need, a special, uh, well, and many of them are family members and, and acquaintances who um, we're close to. And it's just a natural bridge for us to share the love and the hope and the peace of Christ with them. These people need a very special loving affirmation from us that God loves them, wants to include them in God's family and equip them for ministry out in the world. So how do we do that? Well, I believe we do that as the church has done it over the last 2000 years. We love people out of their hurt and pain into the loving embrace of Christ. We have a unique message of hope and transformation that will bring love and joy to people in all circumstances. Now, I've observed that when people are hurting and most aware of their needs, they are more open to the message of Jesus and his salvation. These days are great moments to pray for God's help to reach the depressed and the worried and those in fear and the ones who are trying to ease their burdens and pain through insufficient methods of self-medication to relieve their their anxieties and fears and finding it that their self-medication is just wanting it and it doesn't do the trick but we have a special message for them a message of life and transformation well we do that together as a church it's, a, it's called ministry or serving um, service so let's turn to ephesians chapter 4, and let's read together verse 7 and 11 through 13. But before we do, let us have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would guide us and lead us and help us hide in our hearts your word, help us to understand and be inspired by it, that we might respond to you in worship. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the word of God. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. And then down to verse 11. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up 
until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. May God bless to us the reading and the hearing of his word. Well, in the wake of so much violence and hatred and racism that we experienced in 2020, there's a, there is a way to bring transformative change to our world. God calls us all to leadership in the church, to participate in his ministry and service to others. God calls us to be these loving, caring, um, sensitive servants to the needs of other people. The church is not just led by the clergy, but by all the members using their various spiritual gifts. Some of us are, are more public in our leadership, such as what I'm doing right now. Others exercise their leadership behind uh, the scenes. But all of us contribute to the good of the whole body of Christ. Clergy like myself are usually regarded as the leaders of, uh, who equip the church members with tools to accomplish their ministry, but we are just part of the big picture. God has called each of us to be ministers in his church um, to equip one another with the gifts that God has given us. Now, the Apostle Paul lists a small group in this passage of spiritually gifted leaders and ministries. He says, some were called to be apostles or prophets or evangelists or pastors and teachers. However, there are many other gifts that he lists in other passages, such as 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12, that make us all leaders call, and we're all called to equip the church for ministry. Now, those who know more have ex and have more experience teach and equip those with less knowledge and experience. It's just as simple as that. For example, I may know biblical Greek and have skills in preaching and teaching the Bible. I might have worship leadership and visiting the sick and hospital gifts, but I would be awful at fixing meals for our soup kitchen ministry. I can't be everywhere and do everything all the time. We need each other to contribute our God-given abilities for the healthy and effective ministry of Grace Presbyterian Church. Now, God designed the church to be like an organic body with a, a diverse set of organs contributing to the functioning and health of the whole body. We can't do, do without each other or, or we're going to die, right? We are a group of diverse leaders, skilled and gifted for the purpose of building the body of Christ. Now, the church was intentionally made up this way. It is the gift of God through his grace that appoints us to our various duties in the church. And God calls us individually to do just a certain part, a part we were created and called to do. And these are the tools that God has given us to do them. Now, Grace Presbyterian Church has all its needs, has all it needs to do the ministry God has called us to do. We do not lack for what we need to do uh, in this ministry of the church. What must happen, however, is for each one of us to be intentional in our ministry. God has given us these tools that we need to do his work in Vista and beyond, but it is not going to be done if everyone thinks that someone else will do it. Now, I can teach and I can preach and comfort you in, in grief. I can cast vision and train church leaders in Presbyterian polity, but I can't do all, of, all that needs to be done to grow the church. We together, a unified diversity of gifted people, have the tools to be the healthy body of Christ for this time, this place, and this season. Our church will grow in proportion to the degree that the members use their spiritual gifts. Now, we are 
ordaining and installing new elders and deacons today, and they can't be the only ones doing the ministry either in this congregation. They have been called by God to be leaders in this body according to our structure as a Presbyterian church, but they can't do it all. All of us have the responsibility to be involved in the work of Christ through the body of Christ. These leaders will need people such as yourself to serve on their committees. They will need people to come alongside them as a team to do the work that needs to be done to grow the church. They can't do it alone, especially during these challenging times of COVID lockdowns. They need encouragement through all of us helping them achieve God's purposes and vistas. So take a moment today, maybe give one of these leaders on our session or deacons a call and just say, how can I help? Who can I call to check on? Who, how, is there a meal I can deliver to somebody? Who can I pray for? Your help makes the body of Christ even more healthy and more effective in its ministry. And that's service. So our gifts are tools for equipping the saints, but what are we equipped for? Well, Paul teaches for the works of service. And, and that word service is a translation of the Greek word diakonia, which we get our word deacons from. It means service or ministry. A call to ministry is not a call to a position, but a call to serve. I, this is my 42nd year in ministry where I have been called to be a pastor in the Presbyterian Church. Can't believe it's been that long already. Now, this uh, call is a shock to the proud and it is emancipating to the humble. No Christian is called to be great just to be a servant. And Lord, I know uh, what that means. God sends leaders to the church to prepare and equip it for the ministry. There were leaders sent to, you know, to me for teaching and pouring into me, preparing me for ministry. And that continued throughout my ministry to this day. I'm constantly learning and growing. And then sitting at the feet of, of teachers and uh, servants who have taught me so much. Well, the body of Christ is not a static institution, only satisfying its own needs. We're called to be active servants to one another, but most importantly to the world, as Christ was and is a servant to us. He is the master builder. We are the servant journeyman. And so we sit and we learn and we watch and we observe and we wait and we do. We get those wheels in motion because as my wife is fond of saying, the car drives easier and steers better when the wheels are turning, right? <laughs> so we don't sit still. We just get out there and do the things that, make, that glorify God and draw attention to him, pointing to Jesus. Well, the criteria for determining our ministry focus is, does it build up the body of Christ? Our ministries are to be structured so that they build the church. It can be a, uh, by building or adding new members or believers or maturing the current uh, members of the church. <laughs> In either way, it's a work of building the body of Christ. Collectively, we are all gifted to contribute to be actively involved in either, either of these building ministries. Every one of us have a, a ministry calling to use our gifts for helping and healing and teaching and counseling and encouraging and visiting, uh, reaching out with the good news of the gospel, evangelism, praying, or any number of other gifts God provides through his grace. There are many lists of spiritual gifts, which I mentioned earlier, which Paul teaches about these things in Ephesians, uh, but also in 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12. And, and I'd be glad to help any of you discover and develop and use your spiritual gifts so that you can be turned, uh, turned loose to help build the body of Christ. Just give me a call. 
Well, all of this Paul teaches uh, is all of this that Paul teaches is for a purpose. So after our equipping for ministry, Paul de defines the purpose. Um, so let's look at verse 13 once again. He says that it's until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So we're trying to build the church towards these ends. The first purpose is in the unity in the faith. Now, this is not to be confused with trusting faith but it refers to faith as a body of doctrine, our religious faith, our Christian faith. When all the church is ministering with the gifts, there, there will be a tangible unity in the faith. When the whole church serves in their gifted calling, it unifies us, it brings us together, despite our differences and diversities. Christ's Spirit unites us and gives us purpose to do his work on earth. The second purpose is a, a knowledge of the Son of God. Well, two reasons for this are clear. First, a doctrinal foundation of Christ will keep false teaching from influencing the church and leading it down a heretical path. And secondly, a full comprehension of Christ will mature believers attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. In other words, that we become more like Christ in all that we do. Scholar F.F. F. Bruce writes, the new humanity on earth must grow up to adult maturity in order to resist all the adverse forces that threaten its health and effectiveness. Now that is why we have lots of teaching ministries and Sunday school classes. It's all designed to help the church grow in the knowledge of the Son of God. And when we are bound together in Christ, we realize our unity with one another is very strong because Christ is there. He's the glue. He holds us together and he strengthens us for his purposes. So in a moment, we're going to ordain and install new elders and deacons to the session and the deacon board. Uh, at, and they're going to be leaders in the ministry of Grace Presbyterian Church at these levels. It doesn't mean that they have reached the ultimate knowledge or maturity in Christ. They are people who are on a journey of faith, learning and growing just like the rest of us. It's not that they are qualified for the call to ministry, but God has qualified the called. They're humbly willing to serve with God's help. The congregation has elected them to serve, having observed their spiritual gifts in ministry. And they will be actively involved in the building up of the church, specifically here at Grace Presbyterian Church. And this year, that will mean supporting all our ongoing ministries, but adding all the preparations for searching, finding, and beginning a partnership with a new pastor. Now remember, I'm the interim pastor here at Grace, even though it's been over three years and will likely be another year. But at the end of their search, they will be calling, or not actually nominating to the congregation, the pastor, uh, to be elected for Grace Presbyterian. Well, in a few weeks, the session will be seeking members of the church to place in nomination to serve on that pastoral nominating committee. It's a very long and rewarding work of the church seeking God's will for the next pastor of Grace. Uh, it will be made up of a cross-section of Grace members who are maturing Christ followers, biblically knowledgeable, informed in Presbyterian polity, prayerful and skilled discerners. And if you would like to submit names of members of the church for consideration, please give them to uh, our clerk of session, Sue Weston or myself, and we'll gladly pass those on to the session for that consideration. Now, everyone should be keeping this process in prayer for the best people who can work in unity toward the goal of identifying who the next shepherd of Grace Church will be. 
The challenge in this broken world that we live in is to be relevant and joyfully contagious in the work of the Lord. Amen? <laughs> Jesus promised us that if we will make ourselves available, he will supply the resources for the ministry he's called us to work toward. He will fill us with the power to be his witnesses in all the world through his spirit. And if we are willing to give God credit for all that we do, if we are are intentional to be the body of Christ in the world around us. God will be glorified and God's church will be built up as a beacon of light and truth to a world tossed around by every wave of cunning and crafty, deceitful people scheming ways to shipwreck uh, all of us or especially individuals. We stand on the foundation of Jesus Christ and upon this rock, God will prevail and transform our world for his good. Amen. The word of God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so dependent upon you in all things. We humbly come before you with hands uh, stretched out to receive your grace, your mercy, your direction, your truth but especially grateful, Lord, for all your good and perfect gifts, which uh, help us to grow and learn and become more mature in our faith and in knowledge of Jesus Christ so that we can be more effective in ministry. Lord, it's a, a daunting task. Uh, there are many challenges in this world for the church these days, especially uh, since uh, most of the of our culture is moving away from uh, relationship with you and anything to do with church, we pray, Lord, that you would give us insight. Give us, Lord, um, some understanding of how to reach out to just one family, somebody next door or to a family member um, that truly needs you and the transformative power in their lives that you would give them uh, to be uh, loved and cared for and to know that you exist and that you really care for them and that they can be welcomed into your family. So, Lord, we pray for that. And along those lines, Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for restoration of uh, wise uh, leadership that is uh, dependent upon you um, to lead this nation in loving and caring and uh, uh, wonderful ways that will will help people and um, and not destroy people. We pray God for this nation's economy, um, that it will be restored. We pray, Lord, for this nation's um, uh, deliverance from the pandemic. Lord, we pray that the vaccines can be distributed uh, quickly and efficiently in a way that will reach those who are most vulnerable and to the rest of us after that. So Lord, we um, commit this day and all that is in it uh, into your hands, trusting you for everything um, through your grace. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray, uh, who taught us to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, in a moment, um, one of our worship team uh, uh, leaders, Diane Felthaus, will be uh, singing a song called Breathe, and uh, leading us in a very meditative moment before we have our ordination and installation of church officers. So we'll, right after this song, we'll be right back.
Welcome you this morning to our Grace Presbyterian Church. This is the day that we ordain and install our officers. That's our elders and our deacons. And it's my privilege to be with you and to share with those folks here this part of the service. Let me make a statement of declaration at this point. To say that we are all called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be disciples and servants of our Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service, as deacons, as elders, and as ministers of the word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us providing for ministries of caring and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church, and preaching the word and administering the sacraments. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of Grace Presbyterian Church now ordains Sue Bouchard, and Crystal Delu to the office of deacon. And Larry Luther and Pat Sexton to the office of elder and installs them to active service on their respective wards. The session also installs to active service those who have been previously ordained Deacons Russ Whistler and Jean Compton and elders Wayne Campbell, Jane Parker, and Dwayne Weston. Thank you, Sue and Pastor Will. Um, and thank you, everyone, for being here today. And thank you to the congregation online. Um, it is my privilege as moderator of the session of Grace Presbyterian Church to ask the constitutional questions to the newly ordained. So those of you that have already been ordained, would you please sit down for a minute? And you folks out here in front, we're going to ask you the constitutional questions, the vows for ordination. Okay, so the first one. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of the Church as authentic and reliable expo expositions of what Scripture leads us to believe and do, and will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? So say, I do and I will. I do and I will. Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture, and be continually guided by our confessions. If so, say, I will. I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity, and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, say, I will. I will. Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, say, I will. I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? If so, say, I do. I do. And this is my favorite. Will you seek to serve people with energy, intelligence, 
imagination and love. If so, say I will. I will. So to you uh, deacons, will you be a faithful deacon teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? In your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will. I will. And to the elders, will you be faithful? Will you be a faithful elder watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in governing bodies of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will. I will. Phew. That was a lot of them, wasn't it? Uh, mine all together. So Sue, uh, Sue Weston, our clerk of session, please ask the, con the congregational question. Uh, so to those of you at home in the congregation and those of you here, do we, the members of the church, except Sue and Crystal, Larry and Pat, as deacons and elders, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. We do. Do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? If so, say, we do. We do. Thank you, Sue. Okay, so uh, those of you elders that are in the back row, uh, if you would stand with me and uh, raise a hand toward uh, these to be ordained, um, and we'll pray a prayer of ordination over them. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your servants whom you call through baptism as your own and marked as your own. Grant them the same mind that was in Jesus Christ. Give them a spirit of truthfulness that they may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. Give them the gifts of your Holy Spirit to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision. In the walk of faith, and for the work of ministry, give to your servants gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor and courage, and an abiding sense of your presence. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Sue? Please pray with me. Gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church, that we may be for you a holy people, baptized to serve you in the world. Sustain this congregation in ministry, ground us in the gospel, secure our hope in Christ, strengthen our service to the outcast, and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together, that we may be servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Sue. Sue Bouchard, Crystal DeLue, Larry Luther, Pat Sexton, I declare that you are now uh, deacons and elders in the Church of Jesus Christ for this, for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ Jesus our Lord. Welcome to this ministry. And because of COVID, <laughs> we're just going to tell them about it. Peter chapter 4. It says, The end of things is near. 
Therefore, be serious. Discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us in this segment of our worship service. And uh, now we're going to uh, go to the music department for um, uh, Make Me a Servant is the name of the, of the song. And then I'll be right back. Well, I think that's a prayer that that I pray every day. Lord, just help me be the servant you've called me to be and uh, give me the tools and the, and the abilities, the energy to do that. Um, and God does provide. He does lead us and guide us and provide for us all that we need for the call that he has upon us for ministry, service uh, in the church to help it build into an effective ministry to the world around us. And now hear the benediction. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we all ask or can imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Have a great week. Everyone, we'll see you next week. Make us one. Make us one. By the power of your Spirit, make us one. So your kingdom, Lord, your kingdom will come. Make us one. Lord, make us one. Give us 
Yeah. Uh-huh.